Love Line, Coast to Coast. It, it is Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. And tonight we're elated to welcome David Allen Greer <laughs> to the radio program. <laughs> I'm back up in here. Oh, <laughs> hey, Dr. Drew, how you doing, baby? What? Nice. It's nice being up in here, love does line. Soul get periodically Woo! possessed or something. I always yes. come to visit my buddies. Yep, Geraldine possesses his soul. Hey, you don't you talk about Geraldine? That was fine, fine theater. Flip Wilson never honored for the Geraldine in him. Really? Right. Is Flip still alive, by the no, way? Uh, no. Flip flipped on to the... Uh, hey, he moved on to the other side? He did. He's telling uh, jokes in the sky now. Well, I don't know how far up in the sky they are. But, how you uh, fellas doing, oh, baby? We're doing good. We're doing good, nice. dude. Nice. David Allen Greer, dear, 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 dear friend oh, of mine. Yeah. Uh-oh, Three dears. Uh-oh. He's that, a that's, dear, that's, dear, that's, dear that's friend of mine. That's all isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> on, man. We box, baby. Dr. Yeah. Drew, I come in. Dr. Drew's like, I'm, he's getting his neck rubbed. He's like, ow, ow. I punch a bag with Adam and my neck is crooked. And David's, he's got some boxing skills. He says he can't. Bang, bang, bang with me. He goes, how old are you? I'm like, Four, he goes, too old. Can't do it. Can't do it anymore. Well, you he know goes, what? I, my doctor says I can't do it anymore. Not it's the true because all of the years of back pain, I have an actual back injury. So that's why he couldn't call Squish. you, Adam. He didn't call you back. But I box through it, don't I? Yeah. Don't I? I do. I don't sit up in here and uh, rub it on me. That's why you didn't call him back, Adam? I got to I got to be uh I got to be honest. Hold on a second. Uh, hold on there, Adam. I uh, didn't know I'd be a tag team since I walked in the door. You no, know? this is not a trial. Well, you know, I sure do feel like OJ right about now and I thought my buddy Dr. Drew was going to come to my aid. I thought he liked you too. I don't know <laughs> but why. But you got me as soon as I walk in the door, Dr. Drew. <laughs> yep. Little little shot to the kidneys. It's true. David right. oh. Al- David Allen Greer has uh, serious boxing skills. Ah. Now, now, I'll be honest. Uh-oh. I've worked with a lot of guys in my day. I've held the focus gloves for many, many a champion. David's had some good days. He had some bad days. But on his, on his good days, <laughs> he's got some, you know, good endurance, good hand speed, good pop in his punches. Yeah. He Tell him what I way. do. I always try and, like, he always holds the bag. He always holds the focus mitts for me first. And I'm like, all right, man, I'm up and out of here, man. I guess. <laughs> I'm like, no, wait, no. Stand there. All dumb. Did. One more round. Oh, then, then he takes your shoulder, arm right off your shoulder. Yeah. He's got issues. Adam's got issues. David's a man on the go, though. He shows up, and when he shows up, the first thing he does is tell you why he has to leave early. And then he complains because there's no black man music on the CD. Uh, yeah, but you have, like, you know, the what? Disco Carpenters 2000. Yeah, yeah he, has, no, he has Deep Purple, Highway Star. I, right. I you right. have the worst music Leonard Skinner. That's at the Earth. party house. I don't oh. have the selection And of that's music another thing. Every time I come to that house, it looks like you just had some butt-naked partying going on. Never invites me. There's always, like, you know, little Marachino cherries half full, <laughs> little dessert trays all around. I'm like, Adam, what went down? He goes, uh, nothing. nothing. <laughs> hey, hey, let's box. Let's nothing go. you need to know about. Let's yeah. get busy. Yeah, I'm on. a little hungover from last night. What happened last night, man? Uh, no, nothing, nothing. Where's your heavy bag in that house? It's uh, it's in the, I got a workout room. That's where uh, David and I work out. Yeah. But uh, I hold he the does. focus gloves for him. And uh, I'm ready to get back into it, David, if you All are. right, man, I'm ready now. This is my commitment from this day forward. <laughs> now, let me give you some boxing adv- advice, Dr. Drew. Adam goes, I go, Adam, do you run? You know, get your... Oh, no. <laughs> you, you see my legs? See, I'm jumping up and down. I'm scooting away from you. Now, watch. I did a little turn there. That's road work. <laughs> That's yep. road work, okay? You move around like that for three or four hours. That's road work. Bend your knees. That's all you need. <laughs> well, nice. uh, let's talk about uh, DAG, by the way, and get our uh, man, plugs in. It's just some old network uh, star vehicle that I'm in, man. Yeah. I don't want to linger on that. Tuesday nights, uh, 830 Tuesday NBC. Night's 830. It's going to be with us again. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so, because I'm, I'm buying stuff, man. Yeah, I got to, good. you know. I went down to Ferrari dealership, and I was like, really? No. do you have a convertible? No, Can you, you make that one a convertible? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't go out like that. I didn't. No, he's like all the brothers. He drives a huge SUV. <laughs> I know, but inside it's got a hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, David, I got uh, Shaq's old load. Do you, say, do you still have David's song from the last time he was on this show? 
I don't even remember that. Oh, came out of me. Here it is. Like a little plop here, a little ski there. <laughs> ski, 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 ski everywhere. Everybody, everybody, ski, ski. That's how you do your three sums with me. Oh, my God. My Christ! I that just looked down. I just, I just looked down, saw the uh, punch list here, and saw that David uh, is racing in the Long Beach oh. Grand Prix this Saturday in the celebrity race. Who else is in that celebrity race? A lot of very big uh, celebrities. Guy named Eric. You know that guy from uh, ER. Yeah. Billy Blanks is racing. All Billy right. Blanks is racing. Josh Brolin, the winner of last year's. Right. Uh, Piper Parabo, little cute little Piper Parable. Yeah. She's Shout out! She's to a Piper ha- Parable. Hey, baby, how you doing? She's Love a, you, Dumplin'. She's what? a household name, that one. Oh, she's fat. And uh, now well, what let's about... Pump, let's wh- pump the brakes here and pull over now. What about the other black guy from Fresh Prince of Bel- Bel- oh, Bel- What's his oh, name? Oh, are you talking about Alfonso Ribeiro? Yeah, Alfonso. who races like every real. year instead of me. No, he's, 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 he was racing professionally. He came over to visit when we were training. Really? Absolutely. He has wow. his own car. Oh, my and, God. You know, he came over like, you know... and He, he used to win this thing all the time. Oh, yeah, I raced yeah. one year with him. And who he else serious. is in this? Um, Jim I'm, Kelly, Big Jim Kelly. Never we heard of him. Dara Torres. Don't uh, know who that lady. is. Well, she. I'm won dying to do this five. race. Listen, I'm going to campaign on your behalf, Adam, because there's nothing more fun than the Toyota Grand Prix. It is fabulous. It's what, wonderful. What speeds do you get up to on that track? All right, I was over there at Long Beach a few days ago. We were doing our first test run on the um, big track. Well over 100 miles an hour. Really? Yeah. You don't really have time to look at the uh, uh, speedometer. You know, speedometer. Now, what, do you, what are you driving? Are you driving? We're driving Celicas. Everybody drives a Celica. It has the racing seats and the belts. Um, I don't know exactly. They say they're stock, but they're a little tricked out for uh, racing. They give them like an air filter, an exhaust system, or something like that. Yeah, they tweak yeah. them a it's little nice. bit. It's nice. I know. Because when you drive around, you get the racing car sound. Because as an actor, it's all about appearances for me. <laughs> yeah. Me, you know? yeah I'm empty inside. Yeah, I'm yeah. barren. I'm barren. Well, Nothing but cobwebs in my soul. Yeah. But outside, baby, what? look out. What soul, by the way? Look out. You see my facial hair? Yeah. yeah I yeah, look like a him. homeless man, don't I? What are you on, hiatus or something? Oh, uh, I want heroin, my friend. It's <laughs> oh. better than hiatus. That makes every day a hiatus. So I'm, getting you, ready for, I'm getting ready for a film, actually. I'm going to do a film called Boss Lear. I see. It's an adaptation of King Lear. No laughs in there, my friend. Just what, drama. When is that coming out? Oh, I don't know. You know half the stuff you do it. You don't know when it's coming out. Well, that's a good that's point, crazy. although I don't that's do crazy. half the you stuff. You know, let me though. ask you something, Mr. Yeah. Philosopher. Mm-hmm. When you're eating a big T-bone steak and mm-hmm. enjoying it as it goes down, do you ever ask yourself, hey, when's that coming out? Oh, he's, no. He, oh, he, oh, yes, he does. Oh, he does. He's planning for it. No, that, no, that is a very good point. Whoa, guys. I, I like, guys I, whoa, Adam, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't bro. mean to jump the gun yeah. here, but... um. Dr. Drew gave me some uh, medication for my stomach because, you know, I have a squeezy stomach Adam, right. from last time. So let's mm-hmm. kind of steer clear of the butt stuff. Okay. Oh, right. thanks, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. So thanks a lot, Dr. Drew. Last time David uh, came on, he got a little nauseated because I was talking about okay, something. Okay, hey, 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 let's... I, we don't. I don't think everybody needs to know exactly what you were talking about. No, I, I I, no I'm not. I'm not going to get into detail. Okay, no, I can't long. remember if we were talking about <laughs> extra men or felching oh. or something. Oh, something that had to do with the anus. I mean, you know what felching is. That's when uh, uh, the semen goes into the oh, anus. Somebody God. sucks it out. Yeah. Oh. Now I've heard they do it with a straw. Yeah. Sometimes, and I don't understand that that kind of thinking. I mean, even amongst the homosexual community, I mean, what what would be a turn on about uh, retrieving one's semen the from straw. an anus? Just yeah, to even and I'm gonna and, go out. Uh, now hold on a second, there. I just want to get to the bottom of this. I mean, are they are they ingesting the semen? Well, and I, I imagine they they step up to it. Maybe they first <laughs> Just do it by themselves. Uh, like uh-huh. the t- 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 Hold on, Dave. Let's, let us finish this conversation <laughs> real quick. So, are you saying they <laughs> they, they first jacked it on, on like a tile <laughs> the sink counter, and then <laughs> oh, that how they retrieve well, the they, sink? They, they, they practice with that. Uh huh. And, and a see, man, it, it has a sort of a milk <laughs> consistency. Or sort of, is it thick like tapioca? <laughs> David, are you all right? Oh, I just found that mercury head dime. <laughs> I lost it seven long years ago. Are you okay, buddy? Oh, I'm all right. Guys, please, can we change the subject? I'm here to heal some babies. Okay. Good call. Sorry, Jack. Huh? Drew, you want your pill back because it's right here. Oh, there the it table. is. Oh, yeah, I just, nice. I just had a real quick question for Drew. Yeah. Is, is it possible that the semen mixes in <laughs> with the people, man? It all comes back. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, could so you get some traces of uh, fecal matter in this thing when you would drink that? Is that possible? So it'd all be sort of tapioca. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess it would, but it'd yeah. be a browner. <laughs> David, you okay? We're gonna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right. Oh. I'm sorry. I just, just want to hold on. Uh, we just want to get the I bottom. Get a, can I get a mop and a bucket in here? Because uh, we just want to get the bottom of the felching thing. I just didn't know how it worked. That's <laughs> okay. Here we go. Go to call. Add so some incense. Take, let's take some calls. Go on. There we go. <sighs> Carrie. Oh, I hope yeah. It, uh, Carrie. Yeah. You're 21. Yeah. Yeah, David Allen Greer is our guest. How are you doing? Hi, David Allen Greer. Yeah, we upset yeah, him. I'm, I'm sorry. It happens, I, happens every I, time. I'm going to hang an IV. He's getting so vulnerable. <laughs> I, I am so lightheaded right now. Ooh. What's your problem? Hello? I'm sorry, Carrie. Go ahead. It's all about you, girl. What's up? Um, I uh, have had a lot of sexual partners, and no no one's ever been able to make me come. Neither men nor women. Only I can make myself come. Mm -hmm. Do you do that in the presence of these people, or do they... No, no, I'm too embarrassed to do that. And do, do they... Do you use a vibrator, or do you use your own tongue? No, I... No, <laughs> um, no I use my hands. I use my fingers. I see. And could you do that when you're with a man? I mean, what if a man was in you, and you used your fingers? I mean... Mm, no. Uh, no, it has something to do with the way I... I can only do it if I, like, tighten some of my leg muscles. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I can't. I uh, I don't know. It has to have like some kind of bodily tension to do it. Can't you figure out? Have you, have you been in a relationship where you can sort of figure this out with someone? Um, no, I, I haven't had like very long like trusting relationships with anybody because it's kind of, um it because I can't. You know, it's it's hard to get close. I don't know. It's just, yeah. Never well, that that's what you need. You, you need, need to work it out. Yeah. Why can't you have a relationship? But even like even I was with a guy for seven years on and off, and he and I was so in love with him, and I wanted to marry him, and I still couldn't. How old are you? Twenty-one. She's Fourteen. <laughs> what? Twenty-one years old with a guy, seven years on and off. When I, from when I was fourteen to like when I was twenty. But the point is, you've been you were pretty young when you were sort of infatuated with this guy. You didn't have a real relationship. You need to have a real relationship where you can feel open and trusting and try to figure this out with some at least you're the fact that you can do it by yourself means you should be able to figure it out in some capacity did he break yeah, wind he in front said, of if you're you? too yeah. embarrassed to do it in front of someone else then you'll never be able to do it you know? but you need yeah. that everything i david dishing you a challenge i think yeah i want you to come in this studio little miss fancy pants <laughs> and diddle that love button till your head pops off <laughs> <laughs> now get in here <laughs> Sick of it. Carrie, find it. one guy and work the beats out, so to speak, with him. Okay? okay. okay. All right. All right. Good Thank times. You. Good times. Bye -bye. There you go. Man, I just, you know, I got past the whole sickness thing, but I just want to say I love you, Adam, <laughs> man. I love you, Dr. Drew, man. Good to have you back, David. Group hug. Group yeah. hug. Oh, <laughs> nice. Let's heal some babies. Okay. All right. Here we go. <sighs> Alfredo? Uh yeah, how you doing? Yeah, you're 17. What's going on? Uh yeah, before like we get start, like before I ask my question, I just want to say like, Adam, I'm a very long, very long time listener, like first time caller, and like, like I act like you. And we have like the same, like I have the same humor as you. It's like so funny every night. Okay. When I, like, I can't go to sleep without it. Thank you. What's and, your uh, question? Well, like I, it's not really a question. It's a situation. It's like I walked in on my dad whacking off. Oh boy. Yeah, and it's like it's kind of awkward. Paint you know? the scene for us. What happened? <laughs> well, yeah. David, you are really an insensitive guy. I didn't know. I'm sorry you've been it's saying very that. traumatic. But to like, the yeah, nurse, turn the IV up, please. Tell you right 125 now. cc's no, now. I tell you right now, if I ever caught my father whacking off, he'd get a standing ovation from me because I'd be really impressed. <laughs> yeah, I would too. <laughs> well, at his age, I don't think my dad has a penis. <laughs> my dad's penis was confiscated when I was eight. <laughs> he hasn't seen it since. <laughs> That's how he's able to wear those tie-up pants. Yeah. Oh. This fashionable pants. Have you guys gotten joke writers? Because it's marvelous material. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, Adam. I, I didn't mean that. Not as your men on film. Uh, oh! Two snaps. Woo! Two snaps and a gerbil. <laughs> so, Alfredo, we set the scene. Alfredo. What happened? Well, like, I'm, I'm, I'm walking out of my room, and, you know, I'm just going to go to the bathroom. And I walk in, and, you know, he's he's all red and sweaty and stuff. And, you know? Yeah, I don't believe him. You, you, know, you know what's going no, on. No, we don't believe you. No, yeah, we don't believe Sorry. you. But thanks. Eh, it just just sounds like BS. No. Oh, red and sweaty. Yeah. Alfredo, you know you're full of crap. But thanks for calling, no, okay? Really. 
Oh, All right. What on. do you care? You're 17. You whack off. Your dad whacks off. I mean, I know I whack off, but it's like, I don't know. It's like, you know, but he's like an old guy, and it's like, it's no. a he, for a guy's that age. No, it is. Like, he, you'll be still doing it at that age. Is he married? Um, he's like, he's there. He's separated from my mom. All right. So he's got to do it. It's a maintenance thing. <laughs> don't worry about it. All right. Just relax. Let, let, let it go. Scott don't man, worry about uh, it. Manual, mister. It's got to be awkward. Nocturnal emissions. Let it go. That's right. If dad wants to bring it up and sort of clear the air, he will. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't him. believe him anyway. Jimmy? I mean, he's just trying to get a rise out of his dad. You know, look out, he'll spit in your face. Hey, guys, you <laughs> see the double on time I, I just it. gave you? I got it. Get a rise, spit in your face. I'm talking different language here, fellas. David's doing a uh, upcoming uh, comedy tour this summer, by the I way, am. too. Seriously, are you? I am. I'll be in Dingleberries <laughs> uh, right outside of Cleveland. Uh, um, yuck yucks. Are you, are you going alone or you have some sc- uh, sort of uh, you know, roll, you know, Def Jam roll. posse thing? I come in like an assassin, baby. I come in all by myself. I don't have the big black guy like, For real? excuse me, Mr. Greer would not be signing your autographs <laughs> today. <laughs> no, I come in and out. Come in and out. Jimmy. Put my, put my money in my socks and I'm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you guys are. <laughs> We're all business. business. What? This is Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy, what's going on? <laughs> Jimmy! Jimmy, 36. Yeah, what's, Jimmy, up? what's up? Uh, okay, I've got a... Uh, okay, Adam, um, first of all, you, you're hilarious. Man. Thank you. Yes, I know. Thank you're you. gay. I got to get the... Uh, no, I'm not gay. Come all on. All right, go ahead, Jimmy. <laughs> anyway, you, you're the only guy on the planet that can make me laugh out loud. This question is, is for Dr. Drew, all right? I've, I've uh... I started using heroin when I was 20. Um, I'm probably your oldest caller. I'm, I'm like 36 now. And uh, I've, uh, you know, tried 21-day uh, detoxes. I've, I've uh, lived in California. I lived in uh, in Orange County. I think that's where where you come from, Drew, isn't it? Uh, SoCal. My wife. What's the, yeah, what's the question there, Jeff? The question is... Uh, uh, I'm going through a methadone uh, program right now, and maintenance, I, maintenance or detox? Yeah, it's it's maintenance, uh-huh. and um, which I think was really probably the biggest mistake um, mm-hmm. of my life. I, I, How long have you been on the methadone for? Uh, now two years. How much and, you taking now? About eighty milligrams. A uh, hundred. Hundred. And so, what's yeah. the question? Uh, the question is, um, I feel really safe with with the methadone, and. Um, uh, I live in a neighborhood where uh, heroin is, is very easily accessible. I mean, it's just, it's all over the place. And, and uh, I don't know. What do you mean safe? Desire, what, you know. Right, hold on. What do you mean safe with methadone? And by the way, methadone is sort of a heroin replacement that people, it's a program that people get going with. Drew doesn't like yeah, it too I, much. I don't like it, but, they're, heroin like, light, but there it? are situations yeah. where it can be life-saving. And Jimmy may be one of these guys. Well, he's yeah. been at it for it, it 16 is, years. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, it's it's the only thing that's been able to to sort of, uh, you know, uh, get rid of the, uh, the, the the the. How does methadone make you feel as opposed to heroin? Methadone, it, it's not really. It, it's not a high that that I get from it. You just don't it's, crave the heroin. Yeah, it, it's 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 it removes the the. Uh, but then what, what's wrong with methadone? It? Would I get high? Yeah, you get high. You go to sleep for a while. Methadone? Yeah, just a minute. You cool. don't. You don't really. You David, hold on. It. If you vomit it up, I'll be pissed. <laughs> it's 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 not a high. It's it's a. There, there's a you, you peak out. Yeah, but you know, you, you might get a little. W- what's wrong with doing it then? I think one of the problems with doing it is you can never get to the point. You never get. Oh, well, you, you're, please! You're David, intoxicated the man into a, to some extent. It's oh, it's sorry. it's an altered state. People sort of live in a house of cards that eventually comes kind of crashing down. In my experience, but it sounds like it, it, song, you know, Jimmy. It? If you uh, had spent a year in treatment somewhere and had failed that, then I'd be more apt to sort of embrace methadone. And as you well know, detox is the easiest thing with heroin. The hardest part is staying off the heroin, and that's where you need to stay. Exactly. That's where you exactly. need to stay in very active treatment for at least a year. Is it harder yeah. to get off heroin or methadone? Oh, uh, methadone. Methadone is very mean, difficult. I, to get heroin. Off. The heroin kick is like three or four days. Well, sometimes methadone. You can get lucky sometimes. Some people get off methadone rather fast, like in five to seven days. It, is it's, there, it's unusual. How long, is it a transitional they, uh, treatment? Or are you supposed to just stay on it? No, he's on maintenance, which is indefinite, and, and it's it's really? purely luck whether or not you have the usual six week withdrawal, which is what it normally takes to get off methadone, versus yeah, a five to seven day. When well, you you know I, I hear this from the the guys in the in the, in the clinic and everything. 
that have been on this stuff for years and that have kicked it and, and gone back and everything, they say, you know, it's like, oh, God, it was the worst thing. And it, it can be and, bad. And, it can be and, bad. And Drew, you, you've probably heard of the, the, oh, it gets in your bones. And Yeah, that's nonsense. It doesn't get in your bones, but it causes very intense bone pain because of the changes in your spinal cord biology and your brain biology. But the fact is, methanol may be what you need to be on. If you are tempted to use and ship heroin on top of that, you've got an even bigger problem. You've got to talk about increasing your methadone dose. Talk to the people who are giving you the methadone. And if you decide it's time to get off, come off the drug, that is. You're going to probably need a year somewhere, and so you better be prepared to do that. All right. And uh, methadone, haven't they? That's been around for a while. Can't yeah. they do any better than that? Yeah, there's buprenorphine now. There's other stuff. Well, and, sure, buprenorphine. And, uh, and there's there, other things. Have you heard of uh, diptofelorine? <laughs> I just wanted to be down with the doctor talk. I just wanted to say something medical. Sorry, Dr. Drew. Pedal the car. Should we go right, we go right to the front. Three Stooges? Pedal the front. Hey, listen, uh, you know, I just want to apologize. You know, yeah. I come in here, you know. Yeah, would you clean that up, in fact, sorry, as long sorry. as you're getting into it here? Uh, well, I'll clean it with my shirt. No, really. Yeah. I mean, this is really, I'm trying to, you know, open up to you, doctor. I'm not, you know, trying to be funny. That, he came uh, in here. Excuse me, Adam. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I was saying, I had a little bit of a love, network man, attitude you know when I'm he came saying? in. Uh, you know, I was wrong. Yeah. Okay, guys, and I just want to make apologies all around. Uh, you you know, guys, I, in I, the, David, um, I would love to. It's really you know, difficult. Sorry. It's yeah. the tough with all this vomit all over the table here. Though. <sighs> well, you know, I, we'll this is me, going. Dr. Drew. No you know, kidding. this is me. This is like my soul that I yes, okay, it stinks. And he barfed it up all, all over the, the table. Dickens here. up here, and you and your foul mouth, you made me up, Chuck. He purged your soul, Drew, and you're dancing I'm on it. Sorry. All right, we're going to take a little break. When we come back, we're going to box. We're going to box and, move now. and get some fluids it. into Touch David. Me. We'll talk to Greg. Greg wants uh, David to do the impression po. of the uh, po. of the blues singer po from uh, nice. In Living Color. Yeah, po. So we'll from some the, of that. Uh, MTV's Youth. Yeah. We'll take a break. We'll be back with David Allen Greer so after this. You know what I'm saying out there? Adam and Dr. Drew will be right back. <laughs> David Allen Greer is our guest tonight. What's up, Dan? Tag is the name of his show, 8.30, Tuesday nights, nice. NBC. And uh, you don't, now you don't know if you're picked up yet, but the show's yeah. doing well. It's doing well, man. We're up, we're still on there. We're still I was swinging. telling my daughter was watching it tonight. Yeah. And uh, and it lo lo looks good for it's a nice. second it's season, nice. doesn't it? No, it's only first season. I know, but it looks good that you'll get picked up for the second no, season. No, it's only first season. We're still first season. <laughs> uh, let's take a caller. Yeah, let's take a call. Because this is the first season. I see. I'm the rain man. So uh, Mickey, <laughs> Mickey, you're 28. What's your question? Greg, 22. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, Adam, Dr. Drew, I love you guys. Uh, Thank you. Also, uh, David Allen Greer, you're the best. Thank you, man. We love you here That's in Michigan. Fun. Michigan. What town in Michigan? Uh, Ypsilanti. Ypsilanti, baby. Know it well. <laughs> That's his hometown. Ypsilanti. I went down. I, I went to <laughs> University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. But we used well, we to come party. For you here, there, brother. Yeah, we used to come. We used to party down there in Ipsitucky. That's what they call it. Yeah, Ipsitucky. we do our party in here too, That's as well. Nice. That's nice. Where's Eastern Michigan? Eastern it's Michigan it's is in hell. You, we don't. Even we know. we spoke there, and then we went down to Ann Arbor. Remember? That's yeah. where you ate at the train station. Oh, it's yeah. right. It's close. Yeah, yeah, Eastern yeah. and Ypsilanti, Michigan yeah. State, all that stuff. It's all around there. Good times so, over there. Oh, it's nice. I just would love to hear the uh, blues singer. You know the. Thank you very I much. Uh, I, I need it. I need it, Mac. Come on. I can't, but I need it. You know what? Fox owns those characters. I'll even uh, take they do. Yeah, Fox they do. owns, you're not listening, man. Fox owns the characters like I did on, one time on a radio station. You remember that, Adam? Yeah. It came down. The police came down. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Me. And that's not funny. You know, I'm not just, you know, ha ha he he comedian. No, he did. It hurt. I got <laughs> beat down that night. You remember that? He did the gay movie critic. Yeah. He did the uh, uh, two snaps up mm -hmm. guy on the show about four they years ago. Fingers. They broke my face. Well, not intentionally. It's just you were hanging on to the door jam and well, they slammed I mean, it, it was my you. rights you know it was no, my they said rights. snap this yeah they did so yeah. i'm gonna snap something yeah it. I, they did they maybe it wasn't intentional they yeah. slammed oh, it in yeah. the door yep i started uh, yelling at a car ah and they <laughs> broke the fingers right off yes <laughs> the east police hey greg <laughs> yes, yes yeah i understand with copyright and uh big you know and the jewish man is not a fan of the black man oh, i gotta tell you he's wow. got his lawyers and he's going to come down here, and he'll take away the big SUV in the house in the hills and the white. Hey, listen, I got a ball to pick. How is Oscar De La Hoya saying something offensive by saying the Jew? What do you say about Bob Arum? The Jew Harvard boy. Jew. Now, when is Harvard Jew something bad? 
What was he talking about? He referred Harvard to University. Harvard, University. Yeah, Harvard yeah, Jew. Yeah, yeah he, he referred to Bob Arum as the Harvard Jew. Yeah. And they're like, that's offensive. Now, you can't point out someone's race unless they're being offended. You know what I mean? That's crazy. Uh, man. Yeah. This uh, world is yeah. just. It's nice. getting out of here. I mean, with your mix, your whops, your uh, dings, your. Uh, Dagos, yeah, uh, specs. Yeah, you know, what, you, what do you say? Harvard yeah, Jewish, 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 Jewish gentleman? Jewish gentleman? Jewish. I don't know. I mean, Harvard yeah. Jew, that's like the. You know, what is up? I don't. I wish sure someone would right. label me Harvard Jew. <laughs> I, I really know. do. I'm going to send you a Christmas card. Oops. Hanukkah. Sorry. Yeah. My bad. I, I, I got. Bad. Uh, I got the Valley College Gentile hanging Ooh. over my head. Yeah, not as nice as Harvard Joe. Hey, are we having some fun in here? It's hey, kinder, it's good. gentler. Yeah, this I is better. I took your advice, Doctor. You clean the vomit. I appreciate oh, that. Oh gosh, I'm not know. sure about that. That's the why blanks. we're back. I wish I could be like a dog, you know. I just looked out of my like backyard, back yeah. and there was my little doggy. She was sleeping about an inch away from a big little cocky blob. <laughs> well, Adam, Adam, Adam has a clam. Adam actually clam. asked an interesting question. Is if, if if the dog's sense of smell is truly a thousand times more powerful <laughs> Why than is it sniffing <laughs> crap all day? Why is its face buried in Because he doesn't here? smell crap. He smells pizza. He smells lilac. That's right. I, yeah. He smells everything so. he yeah. just ate. It like, yeah, smell. so yeah. If, you're, if your sense of smell is a thousand times better, and you put your nose an inch away from fresh doggy duke, <laughs> will it smell like a thousand times duke like or rose no, smell like pizza? It, it goes right to what you ate. Is what it is. <laughs> yeah, but no, no, oh, no, they're no. actually smelling what the dog that's what ate. I'm saying. That's I said that's you interesting. You're I not like smelling that. dookie. You're smelling like you smell you before know, it went yeah, in. Some cleanser, a little piece of pizza. Yeah, but no, that's not good because then you're smelling that's dog food. Yeah, yeah that's but, that's that's but that's to true. a dog, that's true. That's not bad. That's a that's very interesting. Nuts, Steve. Hi. You're 19. What's up? Hi. My uh, question is primarily for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> a few nights ago, some friends of mine and I intentionally overdosed on a cough and cold medicine called Coracidin. Um, yeah. Well, intentionally meaning trying to harm yourself? No, 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 no. Intentionally because it contains dextromethorphan. Yeah, why'd you pick Coracidin wow. of all things? I mean, there's a bunch of other stuff in there, too. Is this? Did this suddenly turn into Mr. Wizard, Adam? Yeah. yeah. Hell, so, so Steve, what's the question? It's a That's cold medicine, basically. No, over the counter over cold the counter medicine. Stuff? That's that orange stuff, right? Mm, so he just no, drank a bunch a, of it. And coracidin is the altered, like, well, narcotic. Well, are, you, like are you talking drug? about coracidin tablets? Coracidin tablets, coffee. Yeah. Cold. <laughs> yeah <right. laughs> so, what's um, the question? Well, I've uh, experimented with some um, dextromethorphan uh, use before. Mm. And I had heard from several people that um, coracidin was a different, more intense trip. Well, it's got Sudafed in it, if I, at least certainly the coracidin D does. And it's also got, a, if I remember right, chlorpheniramine, which is an antihistamine. So you're going to... Chlorpheniramine is what I was concerned about, and that's what my question pertains to. Yeah. I had read some about the effects of uh, um, the antihistamine. And, um, well, you can get a delirium from that, and then once, you, once you've survived it, you're fine. And the, de- the pseudofed can raise your blood pressure and cause strokes and heart attacks. What but about again, the kidneys? once you've survived it, you're okay. Uh, the dextromethorphan, the sort of jury is out. It's being called robotripping or DXM, and they're actually selling it as ecstasy because it has a similar kind of an experience <coughs> associated with it. It's a hallucinatory. And hallucinogens seem to all seem to carry the capacity of some degree of brain damage. But how much do they take? <coughs> how, much, how many did you take, Steve? I took 13. That's a lot. That's nice. Yeah. Why 13? Well, that was what I had, uh, read was a fair dosage for a third plateau trip. And what You're you- wrong. You took 13 because 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 in the whole scheme of things. We're in a 4 year. Mm-hmm. A 4 is a challenge number. When right. you take 4, you're saying, hey, I'm going to meet what, I'm the, what I fear the most. So this is like he took his future to, to burst on through and see, see like what, what, where he's going. That's why he took 13. Well, could Speaking be of stroke. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, Steve, oh. did, did you get off? Did you hallucinate? Steve? Actually, the uh, experience him. was pretty dysphoric, and I slept for months. Oh, yeah. 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 Dysphoric. Listen, I'm, why don't like you just that. break down and get some mushrooms? Yeah, huh? you know what I'm saying? What is up, Or some man? antidepressant. Just to, you know what I do? I slam my head in the door like three times. Mm-hmm. Boom. Nice. Nice. Yeah, nice. That, that would what be you, a little less damage. David, what do you like? What do you like? A little nip once in a while? A little booze? 
Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Adam. I'm back in the Vikes, uh, Dr. Ah, I Drew. see. Old Vicodin. The old Vickety Vikes there. I'm doing a movie in Mexico, and so you know oh, where yeah. I'm going. Uh, I'm stubbing my toe the first night out. Uh, right. Por favor, doctore, tu tiene de laude? You, 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 you don't have to call the doctor for that. You can go right down to the pharmacy and just pick it up. Right? Well, yeah. let me ask you something. I read an article about Vicodin. And they were saying, like, usually the guys that get addicted to it, it's not the Vicodin, it's the acetaminophen oh, or something oh, that rips up your liver. Well, that's because what... you're taking, like, 50, 50 No, 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 no. Well, you're addicted to the opiate, which is the hydrocodone. Right. But, and the acetaminophen is what can hurt you yeah. in the product. And yeah, but I'm just saying, what if you're a little older, Jim? Here's what's you hang out with the young here's girls. Here's what's you interesting. pop a few Vikes every week or so. If you, took, if I gave you 12, if I give you 13 Vicodin now, I'd be dead. you'd be dead in two days. Right. But really? something about... Let's do it. But something about the way mm -hmm. people escalate their use of Vicodin when they're addicts seems to give the liver enough time to right. adjust to develop the enzymatic machinery to handle the Tylenol so there's right. no more toxicity. Well, I, I my, my, my average Vicodin addict is taking 50 Vicodin a day. Wow. Uh -huh. I've treated many have taken 100 to 120 a day. No wow. liver problem. Where do you get your but hands on 50 Vicodin a right. day? That's they, a lot. They usually end up ripping off prescription pads. Well, you know what Judy did? Multiple Judy, pharmacies. the late, great Judy Garland, mm -hmm. had uh, minions who would go and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, fill her prescriptions. Mm -hmm. You'd go to Dubai. Back, back then, I'm sure it was no yeah. problem. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And you know the incredible thing about about Elvis her. She died when everyone, she was 13 really. years old. Sang her heart out. Oh, yeah. Day. She was a trooper in a town. The man that won me has come out and undone me. Ah, <laughs> oh, Judy. Singing, I didn't, I didn't singing, know, singing, uh, singing. I think Elvis kind of ruined it for all us guys yeah, who did. knew doctors and thought yeah. we could get a little uh, candy on the side. Let me ask you something, Dr. Drew. Why do all these pill-popping knuckleheads always die uh, on the toilet? What's going on there? Yeah, what's up with that? Judy that's Garland and Elvis Presley both died. On the toilet. Constipated on the toilet. That's not been my experience, but you're taking 50 Viking a day. You're spending a little bit of time working on the toilet. Oh, really? No, constipated. Very constipated. Are you talking about the little rabbit pellets that's like giving birth? If you're birth? lucky. <laughs> Comes that out like fall. shotgun pellets. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Bowling balls. Oh! <laughs> well, that makes sense. You take a bunch of Vicodin, you're constipated, you spend half the day on the toilet, you're pushing hard, and you get a hemorrhage, right? You get an aneurysm. I, I my experience, yeah, my addicts don't die on the so. toilet. No, wow. they die when Drew hits them with the bill. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Carolla, Thank he's going to be doing two shows nightly here at Dingleberries. <laughs> love to love you, Adam. Very mm -hmm. good. Loving you, Dave. Thanks. <laughs> Next up, very funny man. Very funny man. You know him from uh, In Living Color, Mikhail Snavy. <laughs> Give it up for my main man, David, David Allen Greer. <laughs> cut the music. Cut, cut, cut the music. It's wild up in here. Bush is in the White House. <laughs> I'd like to get in some Bush. <laughs> but seriously, though, you know what? Yeah. Ah, that's my time. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Jake. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's hey up, your name, man? team. What's going on? Hey, I love y'all. You guys are great. Cool. Um, actually, I have a couple questions for uh, David, if that's Yo, all right. what's up, man? What you got, man? Hey, um, first of all, loved you in Living Color. We Thank used to you. watch that religiously around here, Thank and you. we still do when we catch it. Now, where are you from, man? I'm from Seattle. Seattle, okay. Right on. Yeah. Um, couple questions. So, you remember that one skit you did where you were, like, singing Broadway? Yes. And they put all the chickens on stage with you? Yes, yes. Were you pissed off? Because there were, there were a couple of scenes of you in there. You looked pretty pissed off. Yeah, I wasn't... Uh, he's a method actor. I wasn't so pissed off as just deeply hurt, my friend. <laughs> well, he's a serious singer, David I is. Am. So I, I think am. he may I have did. thought this was going to be a forum for I that. Am. And then the I tried to back out. out of it, but whenever we, like, would... Something was really bad, we'd start clucking like chickens during the rehearsal. So I tried to back out of it, and Keenan was like, no, 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 you have to do it. So I started doing it because they had gotten all these live chickens. They put them on stage, and it was horrible. It was a horrible, horrible day. And... Uh, Carrie Ann, the Asian fly girl, she comes in after everybody's laughing and laughing. I'm there in my little black leotard. She goes, David, I thought it was good. And that's, <laughs> that's when I put that last bullet in the chamber. I do have one more question. Yeah. So a lot of you have gone on to be stars and stuff like that, uh -oh. you know, big time. And I was wondering, you guys ever going to have like a Living Color reunion? We did. We were honored this year at uh, Aspen at the Aspen Comedy Festival. Really? Uh, everybody came, but uh, Jim didn't come and Jamie. Jamie was doing a movie and Jim was doing something. He's too big. But, uh, yeah, he is too big. So you guys yeah. going to do like a special on TV or anything like that? I don't know. I, know, I don't I know. It, it would be fun, but I want to do it before we get like really old. You know, like, you know how they do your 
show of shows right now. Yeah. Well, that, that and Carl Reiner is still doing the 2,000-year-old man, that, which has yet to be funny. Gilligan's to Island. They, yeah, you don't want to do all that. Alan Hale. Yeah. The third. No. When we're doing high-top fade wigs and stuff, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we, yeah, we had Mel the fly. Two snaps. There. Two snaps. Yeah, the job. When, when you guys were <laughs> in that show's prime, yeah. we had a number of the cast came up. Because those who right. grace us with their presence. I mean, you were not. You didn't. I wouldn't. I was like I going, know. I'm not doing that yeah. show. And, and then uh, I we heard had, Alexander. We, we had the fly girls up here. And I was. Oh. And, and pulled out a picture of that. Oh, and, yeah. They're fine. Uh, the fly girls. God. Jennifer Lopez, Jennifer Lopez was one of the fly girls. She's standing right next to me. I was like, "What bizarre?" Jennifer Lopez. Did you ever know? I saw Jennifer Lopez at a, a Oscar party. I was like, "Hey, Jen, what's up, baby?" Then I saw Puff Daddy or P Diddy. I was like, yeah, "Hey, P. Puff, Diddy. what's up, man?" They were all there together. Staring but so Jennifer Lopez was up here as one of the fly girls. Nice. Where, did you ever yeah. think like, "Wow, she's going to lose half that ass and become really big"? You didn't think that, did you back then? No, I wasn't here, but I didn't think it anyway. Who was here? Who was here, Doctor? Uh, was it Poor Man or Ricky? It poor Man. It was a poor while Man. Ago. Yeah. Oh, what? happened to him oh he's on top of the world wow. oh! great <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens to yeah. all the guys used to host this show i tell you what if he'd have boxed you maybe he'd be a better man that's right ah uh, adam doesn't mess around no it's it, all in terms of boxing everything you talk about it's like hey uh adam what are you doing for the holidays i'll tell you what it's all about the abs. You guys squat. You stand on balls of your feet. Your when you're in church, when you're shopping. Swimming your hips. Always. There you go. They, when you don't, don't turn your head. Turn your shoulders. Hip, there you go. Pivot. Hip rotation. There you go. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> I don't know Fabulous. why I get ridiculed for trying to help. It's good. You're a very good boxing teacher. Am I? Yes. Be serious. I swear yes, to you, yeah. you are. You're better than these knuckleheads. No, you are. He's I, trying to make him uh, say no, that. You're you're hear David Allen Greer say, I'm I would good. like to hear that. You're yes, a good I'm boxing here. teacher. Very good. Because we talk about the fights. Now, did you see the uh, De La Hoya fight? Uh, yes. During the break, guys. Yes. During the break. We'll here talk we during the break. Oh, David oh, Allen Greer here. Everyone. I'm saying De La Hoya. He hit some. You know, he did what he was supposed to do. But, That's uh, right. you know, other dude, man, he's been hit too many times. No, got he. Yeah. One big ball of scar tissue. We'll be back after this. Back in a minute. Hi, this is Dexter and Noodles from The Offspring, and you're listening to Love Line with that asshole Adam Carolla and that guy that's full of himself, thinks he always knows what he's talking about, Dr. Drew. I hate that guy. I could do better than that. Can you say asshole? No, you cannot say asshole. Why? Can you can say ass. You, you know what hole. I hate? I hate these like this jackets who say a hole. Yeah, that's me. Uh, that's me too. F you or no, yeah, that's, that's us. Yeah, that's I hate us. That. Yeah, I hate that. Us. Just don't say the word. Don't say the word. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. It, it, you know, I got to tell you. I'm so peed off with um, you know what because uh, the yeah. whole, the a hole. No. Sea suckers. Yeah, right. <laughs> don't make me use the N word. Yeah. Men can poop. Anyway, yeah, just say some different. No, well, here, here's, the, here's the deal. David, we yeah. have to kill ten hours a week. I know. I know. And whereas you got oh, a, God. you got a, a, a whole oh, pen full of Jews well, to right take on. care of a one half hour oh, a week. We got nobody oh, for boy. ten hours a week. Boy. You see, let so me, we have me, to let use let tell you the, something. This sad sucker. sack life. <laughs> Come on, hire some writers. Want to hear it? Doctor Drew's there. He's healing babies. He's getting the sick off of their 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 sickness. Doctor right. Drew, when are you going to be on the Recovery Network? That is the greatest sitcom television in the history of the media. High energy. Isn't it? Oh my goodness! I come home from tying one on. I turn that to Recovery Channel. No matter how bad my day is, there's someone worse than me. And oh, I'm absolutely. At least oh, their hair's worse. Oh, my God. It's wonderful. And let me ask you seriously, David. Yeah, what do you need, man? Uh, talking about the show and the writing. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. a funny guy. You've yeah. done a ton of writing in your yeah. day. Yeah. How much writing do you do? I can't do on it all. DAG? I can't do it all. I can't do I trust. I no, work I, with the I writers. Know, I work with the writers. But there. there's a bit. Yeah, I do. I do. But you know what? You know, you rehearse all day. I can't write and then do everything. But I do work with the writers. I work with... Um, what, was, what was the answer? From the very beginning. He does. He does. I do. He I helps. work with the writers. But you don't, do you sit down and write segments? Do you write... Do you no, just, what you do is like, it's like this. You do a read-through. Yeah. Table read. So somebody else you writes that. Back. No, 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 no. From the very beginning. From last year in the summertime. In like three months. If we get picked up, yeah. you go back with the writers. You start pitching ideas for stories. So they work with you to say Right, right. Yeah. We yeah. whittled them oh. down. We just pitch, pitch yeah, ideas yeah, back it. and forth. Got that, that's then you go away. You come back. Involved. Right, you're you go back. And, and it's given, I'm given a first draft of a script. Before it even goes to the table, we give notes back and forth. Got it. You know, so uh, all along... 
the process. You're in. It, it's there. But then, you know, when you bring in the network, the studio, oh. uh, you have to pick your battles. I mean, it's wonder really... I like, wonder if they could say it was underpants on NBC. Underpants. Yeah. Oh, my God. We, we oh. uh, I, Drew, have you ever sat in on a table read? Oh, boy. No. It's, a, it's the greatest experience of your life. Oh, boy. Hey, Anderson, get ready with the uh, laughter uh, card okay. there. And basically, here's What's the name of our show? What's the name of our show? Uh, it's called Coffee and Donuts. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm my a, name's my name's Dio. I'm a white guy. Okay. And I'm real uptight. Okay. And I'm the black dude who's jive talking. You're jive talking. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we're we're both cops. Call we're me T Bone. My name's T Bone. My name's T Bone. <laughs> no, you're you're uh, Johnny Donetti. You're, Johnny you're Donetti. tough streetwise yeah, Chicago yeah. cop. Yeah. Donuts. Yeah. Is that, that's donuts. you. And Only I'm donuts. Charles Coffee the Third. I'm okay, very yeah. uptight. All right, come. All right. Now here's the scene. The scene is we're getting ready to uh, go in to yeah. our commissioner's room, our, our captain's room, because he yeah. may be upset and with you just us. Ruined a car. Yeah, yeah we just ruined just another car. car. There you go. We're because you were trying car. to chase down some thugs yeah. and weren't yeah. calling for backup. Okay. Okay. He was playing by his own rules. There yeah. you go. There you go. So here's how the table read goes. I'll start. Coffee. I told you to let me do the driving. You should have looked at the manual. I told you to go by the book. Man, I don't need no manual, you jive turkey. I told you I know how to drive. <laughs> now, when we get in front of the captain, you keep quiet and let me do the talking. Because the last time you opened your big trap, you got us suspended without pay. Yeah, but we had fun, didn't we? <laughs> well, you, you may have a point there, Denetti. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Here's five bucks. Why don't you go over to the vending machine and get me a Snickers bar and a cup of coffee? I a clock bar and an orange. No, no, no. I said Snickers bar and a cup of coffee. Hey, no need to get salty. Don't use the N word in here. Uh, I said Snickers. Hey, that's it. Now, now where do the producers and the, and the writers come in? They, they must they must ring they in They sit constantly. around and laugh. Only at their own jokes. Yeah. Only at their own jokes. They laugh at their own jokes. Yeah, only uh -huh. at their own jokes. Uh -huh. It's vicious. There's a lot of anger in there, Dr. Drew. Mm -hmm. People don't know how hard it is to put a good show on oh the air. God. No, they do. They turn the TV on and they can tell how hard it is. <laughs> But Look at uh, Friends. They're acting, and, you know, Matthew Perry's out again. They're still acting. Oh, yeah. You know, He's on the right. Vicodin. He's our... Blake, what is uh, Matthew Perry on? Is it the Vicodin? I don't know. Drew, you don't, you don't hear anything no, in, in the inner circles? kind of makes me wonder what is going on there, frankly. Ooh, you He's think you would have heard problem. something. He's dealing yeah. with it. Yeah. Blake? I don't, it doesn't yeah. strike me as an addict. <laughs> you're, you're 17. What's up? 16. 16. What's up? Um, well, here's my mm -hmm. dilemma. Um, okay. Basically, when I was a freshman a in high school... Um, my principal inadvertently told my father that I was gay. What do you mean inadvertently? Like, she told him, but, you know, she didn't do it in a way, like, to spite me or, you know, to get at me. It was just... Right. Wasn't How like... would she know? Well, because we were, at that point, like, me and a few of my fellow students were, like, starting a gay-straight alliance. Well, was she t talking about something that she just assumed your father knew about? That, that was basically the situation. Like, Was she talking know, about this gay club you were trying to establish? No, she called because... Listen, listen. Hey, can the guy, can the kid say something? I'm sorry. Let him You're talk. Right. You're right. Go Jeez. ahead. Uh, David's right. Go ahead. Go Thank ahead. you, David. Okay, but, sorry, um, man. So, she had called because I had gotten suspended for one reason or another, like in a completely unrelated issue. One reason or another. Oh, that's it. Drew, let the man talk. I'm sorry for Drew. Go ahead, Blake. Yeah, so it was in a completely unrelated reason. And, mm -hmm. and then somehow she brought up, she because she told my father that... Uh, because I I had screamed out this one kid in class because he made some homophobic comment, mm -hmm. and uh, and then she told my father that I should keep my mouth shut about those type of issues, and, mm -hmm. and then my father was like, "Why would he be involved in those type of issues?" And she was like, "Well, because he started a gay straight alliance and blah blah blah." You're I see. gay. I see. The gay straight alliance is what tipped your dad off. Right. Was it the windbreaker he saw at the house, <laughs> or was was it just the, a conversation? The paper with mache it? rainbow. He put I see. <laughs> All right. So you're gonna you write guys, it out. Those are homophobic. Comments. You're right. And what did you fess up and just tell your dad, yeah, it's true, I'm gay? Well, you know, he, well, at, at that point, my father was like, well, why did he start a gay straight alliance? Is he gay? And then my principal said, my principal said, oh, I thought you knew. I see. All right. Well, so your principal ratted you out. And what did your dad have to say about it? He was, you know, he's, he's not a very homo, homo you know. Homo friendly? Yeah. It's a good so, term. 
So I, I, was, I don't think of myself as homo friendly. He's not a mo lover. Well, look, Blake, I, it almost had to happen. You, you and, it, and it's okay. You you were establishing a network of friends and support groups for yourself and peers like yourself. Mm -hmm. You were very open about this and very public. I can understand you not wanting to, to deal with your parents if they're sort of closed-minded and foolish about these things, but it, it was kind of inevitable that if you were going to be as public as you were and, and as active as you were, that they would find out. And thank God you had established those clubs to fall back on for yourself. Is your mom, you don't talk about your mom, is she involved at all? Um... She she's kind of indifferent to the issue. Like, does that does that anger you or do you do you it, not? It kind of does in a way. Like she she like says, "Oh, you're just going through a phase," and oh, yeah. says she'll still love me anyway. But we oh. well, Adam, you went through a similar phase, like. Yeah, I went through a straight phrase uh, in the uh, early '80s. It did not stick. It yeah, did not. Right. You know, I yeah. kind of, I kind of like to, you know, talk to her, but she, she can't say the word gay. Well, she you can't. listen. Both your parents are going to have to come to terms with this in their own way. <laughs> well, you my stay with a pipe smoker. You get, stay with friends it, that you know? are been through this, get support. And uh, don't push it with them. They're going to need time to digest it on their own, and uh, you're going to have to live your life. Okay. All right, and and you, you figure w with you uh, chairing up the gay alliance at school that eventually right. the uh, cat or penis was going to uh, get out of the bag That's eventually, right? Well, yeah, I mean, right? that was kind of funny because I. Uh, there was an article written oh, about cut him off. the He's club. All right, all right. Yeah, there we go. Well, listen, you, no, you show me a kid who's starting a gay alliance at a school, and I'll show you a kid who okay wants to let his yeah. parents He's know. Also okay with who's it. hanging out at the bus station, you know what I'm saying? We're going to uh, you take, are very uptight about take that our side. Well, hey, you know, I have no uh, issue with those people. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love when I love when guys do that when they're talking about a race or when they're talking about gays or whatever. No means no. That's all I want to say, Dr. Drew. I love it when they do it. The big fat white guy goes like, "I don't have a problem with those people as long as they act within the laws of the community." But when those well, come people on, slavery's over. <laughs> Forget about it already with the black stuff. David Allen Greer's our guest. Now we take a little break. We'll be back. We're back. Like, you know, once or twice a month with your little girlfriend, get your freak on. And Enjoy. Then Enjoy. No, I mean, really. What? Can, can't you do... I'm not me, because, you we, know, we I'm We had saying, this whole discussion about this Yeah, I know, but I'm saying, uh, you know, can't you do some ecstasy every now and then, you know, you know freak it I, real yeah, you hard. you can. You can do whatever boom. you want, but I, I wouldn't. I think, it, to me, it's just Russian roulette. Little really? X once in a while. Really? So, right. I'm saying, well, what, do, what does Dr. Drew do to get his buzz on? Well, what, what do you do? A couple beers? Mm, fine, but not, I don't, I'm not... I don't like. But do you shoot it? Do you shoot it like yeah, Martin and the crew in them? Or he does, he does, does an IV yeah. bag, and yeah, he right. does what's called a <laughs> Merlot bong. It's <laughs> really puts a, a whole seven. I did, boys. Let it. me ask you something. They call hmm. it the one one fifty one butt chase. I did a uh, hot rum uh, enema. Oh boy, talk about a <laughs> ring of fire! Hot Ooh. butter rum. Huh? Oh my goodness, huh. goes right through your bloodstream there, Doctor Drew. That's David oh. Allen Greer, everybody. I brought my rig with me in case you boys want to partake. <laughs> yeah. We got a little dram buoy and some uh, other stuff here. Kahlua. Oh, <laughs> man. The old poopy poopy. Maybe this there. is how they get the felching. Uh, <laughs> in, in I'm cocktail. free. I'm just. <laughs> Maybe the oh. felching cocktail really includes Kahlua. And Maybe that's how they managed it to... I've heard if down. you take uh, butterscotch schnapps yeah. and, and brandy. Uh, cr uh, cream liqueur and uh, do it rectally, yeah. that not only can you get a high from it, but that your partner who sucks it out of your anus via... Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, David. Are you all right? As I was... <laughs> <laughs> I hear once it's ingested, you know, from the rectum, I don't that 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 you can get a high, you know, a, a very special a, high, a special <laughs> high. But again, there's the, there's the fecal matter. This is trace elements of fecal matter that is uh, involved Stop, with the drain. I'm yeah? leaving right now. Is it too I'm much? sorry, David. You okay? <sighs> All right. <man. laughs> Oh, That's God. David Allen Greer. Everybody. Shout out to Run DMC. Saw them brothers last night ripping it up, man. Really? Ripping it where, up. Where are they playing? Your living room? At Deep. 
They were deep. They got a new album. It did kind of get a lull in it when they started playing the new cuts, but uh, <laughs> the old stuff was live. <laughs> hit after hit. They were nice. Run, DMC. Love. David Allen Greer, Tuesday nights, 8.30, NBC, yeah. DAG, and then uh, this Saturday, Help the uh, Times Grand Prix in Long Beach. <laughs> Stop that, please. <laughs> now, you've done it three times, or this will yeah. be your third time? This is going to be my third time. Nobody knows. What what place did you come in the first uh, and Always second middle time? of the pack. Always mm-hmm. middle of the pack. Never crash. You, you ever know? get beat by chicks? Uh, yes. Dara Torres is one of the Olympic athletes. First of all, whenever you have Olympic athletes competing, they have a whole different head yeah. than put, normal people. They put their game face on. Yeah, no, but I'm telling you, they look at it, and they, they figure it out. Immediately, So the rest of us are like, you know, when all the cars come around me, I'm like, I get all punked out. I'm like, you go ahead. Go ahead. Ooh, I'm getting <laughs> well, to be fair. He's close. He's going to hit me. You to know? be fair, you're pretty coked up the first uh, and second was, time you did it. I was I was coked up. I was all sweaty and twitchy yeah. and stuff, you know. So, you know, that adds to You know it. what really hurt me the first time I visited Dr. Drew in a professional manner? He said, you're no junkie. Now get out of here and get high and come back when you got a real problem. Right. Yeah, he did that to me, too. Uh, Except I said first you had to have an anal rectal bleed. Wow. Out. Wow. <laughs> Didn't ow, I? Ow. Yeah. Ow. The rectal tear. <laughs> oh. You know what my favorite show is? Hmm. Trauma. Yeah. Life in the ER. TLC, baby. Oh. It's great. Oh, yeah. it was fabulous. There's nothing better, especially when you're eating, to see some uh, Ooh. 27-year-old landscaper from Guadalajara oh. who has a sprinkler key through the side of his head. Oh, it is. They had, they shot this kid yeah, in between good. his eyes. He walked out of the hospital three days later. We shot him like a bullet. A bullet. Yeah, we, I, it I, stuck I, in the skull. I had a it couple did, of those, too. And, yeah. and, one of, and we, used to, we used to call that the law of inverse worth. Ooh, God. You know, the, the little old ladies, uh, you know, with the 10 grandkids sitting on the bus mm-hmm. stop gets hit by a, a rock that ricochets yeah. off the uh, wheel Car of the bus. Right. Uh, she's dead instantly. Uh, the gangbanger who's killed 12 people <laughs> gets a sh- close-range gunshot wound, goes through an unimportant yeah. barber and walks out. By the way, you can't be feeling too good about your intelligence when you actually take a bullet yes. in the brain yes. and it has no visible effect right. on you. Right. Th- th- they we- showed this one guy, they cut the kid's head open, they cut out some brain because yeah. it started swelling, yeah. stuffed it back in there like an old sock, yeah. stapled them together. And he was watching Jerry Springer a week he later. He did better on his SATs the Absolutely. next week than he did before the Absolutely. bullet. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, like I said, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a dubious honor to get shot in the head and not really have it take too much away from your game. Hey, boys, can I tell you something yeah. how jazzed I mean, I'm, I I feel to be here? This yeah. is crazy. This is nutty, man. Let's, let's, let's save some lives. All right, let's do it. Jim? Yeah? You're 17. Yeah. Up, We're going to save your life. What's up, baby? Let's save go. my life? What's up? Hey, I got a question. Yeah? Uh, sometimes... When, or actually, a lot of times when I masturbate, I fantasize about having sex with my sister. All right, I'm going to wait in the car. I can't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily believe Jim. Well, have you been with your sister ever? No. Anything well, weird? actually, when I was a little kid, we used to take naps together. And sort of when she was sleeping, I used to just explore. It was never anything really heavy or anything. Yeah, but, but isn't that isn't that just some of it? When is it normal childhood sexual exploration it's not that stops at 34 it's also really never normal with a sibling that that suggests some boundary issues really and it all you're saying it's never normal the the, the brain is an interesting instrument i hope your sister's not listening you get these arousing experiences as a child and they become etched in and he right. hit puberty, those are become sexual yeah i'll tell you right now i can guarantee you my mother could never arouse me no, that's not, not like said. your sister. No. Yeah. Now, now you're saying not like an aunt or, you know. Right, right. Grandma. Someone that's a little Someone bit like distant. Yeah. Yeah, he knows what they're doing. Jim? <clears throat> yeah? Uh, you ever want to act on this with your sister? N- not when I see her, but when I see her, I'm weird around her. All right, well, realize that this is from these experiences you had when you were younger. and it's, it, it's, it's not a healthy situation, and by all means... Do not act on these impulses. Don't feel guilty or bad about it. They're, yeah. they're normal for what you've been through, but what you've been through wasn't normal. See if you can nail someone else's sister. That's my <laughs> game plan. Yeah, you need a girlfriend. I think that will take some of this away. Chris? 
Outside of the family, you're saying, yeah, right? Absolutely. Hey, guys, can I yeah. look at your little magic screen? You're always shutting me out every no, time I come ahead, in here. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, Doug. Chris, you're... Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It says Chrissy, not Chris. No, it's not fair. Chris? <clears throat> C. You're C. You're 20. What's up? That's Hello? you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm, I just want to say hi to everyone there, to Dr. Drew and Adam. Hey. And to okay. David. Um, thank you. I've, thank I've you. seen every In Living Color show, and I just think you're really great and everything. Thank you. Oh yeah, he was a talent. Now yeah, this is uh, this is a very important uh, question, Chris. Do you have a question for us? Um, yeah, the other day recently, um, I tried I guess what's called GHB, mm -hmm. and um, it just did a lot of weird things to me. And I just want to know what it is, what it does, and things like that. It's gamma hydroxybutyrate. It's a precursor of a chemical called GABA, which is a down-regulating chemical in the brain. It is beautiful. That's and it, it, it's basically like uh, it alcohol head, in terms man. of how it sedates you. It's, it's so highly beautiful. addictive in certain individuals, and we don't know what really what the risk factors are for addictiveness, but I've, I've treated a number of GHB addicts. Is this, you used to be able to get this from the health food store? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can't get it anymore, right? No, and it, the addiction is really messed up. These people Hi. are... V and I heard it's also light, like, like a growth hormone too, and people yeah. take it to, to give them energy. Yeah, yeah well, it's not so much for energy, except for those people that experience euphoria from it, which again is a biological subset. Uh, but it does increase growth hormone levels a little bit, and so athletes tend to use it. And Major League Baseball's got a problem with this drug. Yeah, but uh -huh. you see a lot of kids in in clubs when you in uh, when you have alcohol mixed in with it. Mm -hmm. And they're just, they call it puddling, man. Just oh, really? Is that right? Out. And par part of the problem with GHB is that there's such a narrow margin between intoxication and seizure and death. Yeah. So you can't be very clear Now, is GHB way. the rape drug? I bet most of the time. Well, Rohypnol is the one that, you know, that has been traditionally associated with that. But GHB has become one of those. Yeah. Roofies was uh, originally marketed by Pfizer as the rape drug, right? Yeah. You, you saw the yeah. campaign. Yeah. Uh, I, I was in that. Oh, yes. I, I, I thought I saw you in that. I'm That's get right. me some tonight. Right. Where's my roofies? Yahoo! Right. Do you, what's David Allen Greer used to get laid? Roofies, baby. Is plop, it plop, a, plop. Fizz, fizz. <laughs> oh, what a relief it is. Quiet <laughs> Is it his star status? <laughs> no. Nope. How about his fat checking account? Nope. nope. Is it his sweet talking to come online? Give me some. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it, it is roofies. Ah, yep, yep. Thank yep. you, roofies. Thank right. you. Uh oh, Dr. Drew was <laughs> improv -ing. That's beautiful, man. You are listening up. Chrissy? Dr. Drew, give me your home number, man. And don't give me that 976 stuff either, man. I'll give you a home number. Cool, man. We're going to call a boss. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. Had my, he's had my home number for four years, isn't called. You don't call back. It's he true. calls I me call, back. I call. You're like some gay stalker. Now listen. <laughs> I want to see you. I'm sorry. I don't want to bother you. Listen, listen. Hey, Adam Karaoke. Listen, this is David Abelier. <laughs> Let's try and get some levity in our little um, voicemail um, message there, pal. Pull the stick out your ass and breathe, my friend. <laughs> Happy Kwanzaa, black brother. So it was... I'm ready to whoop your monkey ass from the year 2001. So bring your little midi mitts, and we're going to beat you down. Now, look at here, buddy love. One quick note. Uh, I thought you were going to tighten me up with that bag, man. See how you do? See how you do? I'm embarrassed. All right. Listen. Have a great holiday. Doesn't have. You call David, you get a message machine, and he calls you back high with some kind of long, rambling, threatening message. You know, it's really bad because I remember I hung up the phone. I got really scared. <laughs> Oh, what did I just do? Oh, boy, I did something bad. For those of you who think David is putting this on, this <laughs> is an, an act. This is a real-life persona. Yeah. That's what the GHB really does yeah, to you. No kidding. Stuff. Yeah, I forgot about it. Okay, so Dr. Steel Dr. drum music you behind you. What was that? You were Jamaica when like, you called him? I was, like, in my car. So like, <laughs> no, but Dr. Drew, what I'm telling you is, like, say, you know, you just party a little bit. He wants to change the subject. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. you do a little GHB. Yeah. You know, yeah. get your groove on, like, mm -hmm. you know, once or twice yeah. a month. Is that going to kill you? No, it's not, it could kill you, but it's not gonna, probably not going to if you don't overdose on it. And you don't drink alcohol. Yeah, alcohol. yeah. that's you. You're a big star. <laughs> Nothing can bring you down, but All right, let's talk to uh, Never, Chrissy. You know, that's that's illegal what you just did, playing my message. I'm sorry. <laughs> Chrissy. Chrissy, what's up? Hi. How are you doing? Hi. <laughs> what's up, man? You're 23, what's going on? Um, well, I've been having some problems with my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, he's 27, and, uh... He, okay, he doesn't like to go out with me. 
he always comes up with little excuses about that. He doesn't want to go out. Has or, he always been that way? Uh huh. Has he always been that way? No, he has not always been this way. Something new. So, <laughs> he's only been this way for the past two or three months. Okay. How long have you been with him? For almost two years. Two oh, years. Oh, boy. All right. You're not living together, I think, are you? No. All right. I mm. think if we were, we'd probably kill each other. All mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not a good sign. <laughs> no, but um, other than that, we get along pretty good. But he likes to go out with his buddies. Yeah. These two oh. guys, they go out clubbing, drinking, um, to raves and everything. I only yeah. know of him going to one rave, and this is the past Friday night. But yeah. um, anyhow, the major problem is he always says, I turn them on too much. Okay. Which I always thought that was a good thing. But we only have sex like once a week. Yeah. It's like we have sex, the week goes by, during the week, you know, I'll like ask him for it and he comes up with excuses, I'm tired or How long has that been going on? For about two or three months. Yeah. Mm. And made, before that, how 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 often was he tapping that booty, girl? <laughs> Practically every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Something's wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and something. Now wrong. okay, before he never had a problem with me giving him hickeys. But now he does. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, but you know what? You know what? He's 27. How old is he? 27? Yeah, no, nobody wants no hickeys, baby. I know. But, yeah, but he doesn't yeah. want, he's going to club. But you're, you're giving I him, want, you're I don't him, want hickeys either, man. That's nasty. But you're giving him hickeys to kind of mark him because he's mm-hmm. heading out. Yes, yep. He mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you ever tried a Sharpie? It. Like, just scribble on his, uh, yeah. winky? Uh-huh. No. Uh, never mind. All right. <laughs> Chrissy. No more hickeys. I, I'm on his side. But okay, okay. do you have any physical evidence that he is cheating? Anybody seeing him with another girl? Anything like that? Um, well, I do know of last year. Um, his brother had told me he was trying to see this one girl. Right. And, uh, why are you putting up with all this? Why does his brother right. tell you that, by yeah, the this way? This all sounds miserable. Why are you putting up with all <laughs> yeah, this? He sounds like an idiot, and you sound kind of dumb, too. I mean, well, well, you dumb, guys should, dumb for you putting guys should up be with a se- separated before you have some retarded kids. It's true. How many kids you guys got together? We don't have any. Oh, wow. Good. See, our college oh. are, are, are you sterile, Chrissy, or what's <laughs> up? No, I have two kids now. Well, I might be pregnant, but not quite sure. <laughs> David said two <laughs> kids. He held it, and you may be pregnant with a third. Yeah. And they're not his. No, the first two are not his. Right. But the. All right. What, what's wrong with you, goofball? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, aren't you supposed to slide into mama mode at some point? She sounds so cute, too. Uh, you're 23. How old are your kids? 12 and what? 14. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, five and almost a year. Okay. Uh-huh. And where's daddy? Uh, um, Chino. We broke up. Didn't you say you'd been with your present boyfriend for two years? Yeah. Child's one year old? Um. Well, he's almost one. He'll be one in a couple more weeks. I know, but we're doing the math. It ain't his Okay, kid. okay. Well, after I got pregnant with my second one, me and their father broke up. He didn't want any more kids. Right, we got that point, but how were you with this guy for two years? Two years? You see, I told you to hang on. The math ain't, ain't, ain't working out. It's <laughs> crumbling, well, baby. It's, it's not quite two years, but... Um, you must have been very pregnant when you met him. I was three and a half, almost four months pregnant. Did right. you tell him <clears throat> that you were pregnant when you met him? Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, Chrissy. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Uh, this guy's a little chaotic. He's 27. He's going to raves at 27. Yeah, he goes out with two guys. him hickeys. He's hanging around with two guys with, um, with, mm-hmm. with those hair. They got those haircuts where they're shaved on the side, and they got ponytails. Um, No, they don't have any ponytails. What kind of, what kind of hair the are they sporting? Shaved on the side? Shaved on the side, kind of yeah. like, um, yeah. I can get that when I want yeah. it. Yeah, these guys are idiots. <laughs> yeah, but they really are. But this is the father of the current right. child. And and honey, you think you're pregnant again? Yeah. Can't you? Why aren't you on some birth control? Who's taking uh, care of those kids? Where's the money coming from? Well, I work, and then their father gives me child support. Okay, but how? You know how, that how may be that, that that would kill my sexual desire. Mm. You know, right there, mm. two, three, three kids, crumb crushes running all in the room. Does he know you might be pregnant? Up your yeah, he knows that. And yeah. how long? How many? How long? Uh, how long ago did you tell him you might be pregnant? Um, two or three months ago. No, just a couple weeks ago. Mm. All, right, all, all right. right. Can you give this kid up for adoption or let it be raised by uh, badgers or something so it has a chance? <laughs> no. All right, but listen, goofball, you're destroying the country. That's true. No more of this, huh? Did you vote for Bush? 
who's who's gonna who's gonna pay for these kids? Who's gonna take care of these kids? You're you're out working all day. She's taking care of them. At least all she's working. Right. Home. All right. Are they are they boys or girls? When the oldest is a girl and the youngest is a boy. All right. You keep him out of prison. You keep her out of the strip clubs. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. That's and listen, I, I I don't trust this guy, and I don't trust you because you <laughs> picked this guy. I have to. I'm going to go out on a limb here, Chrissy. I don't care if you have a whole uh, five or six kids. You sound cute as a button, honey. Oh, <laughs> That's a you. very positive. Right, ha- have a wonderful life, baby doll. Very positive <laughs> message. David, you should have don't get radio pregnant show. again, screwball. <laughs> uh, I date her. I, I swear. I put them all in a big mm-hmm. station wagon. Oh, oh my geez. God. That's Two my kids. God. <laughs> How come we don't, you know what drives me insane? How come we don't come down as a country more on this? I was just thinking. Um, it's too late. First of all, it's too late. Once the once a kid. Yeah, but here, if we if we created yeah, forces but, that but didn't like allow a stigma. people to, yeah, fall like I, into this. Well, I'll yeah. tell you why. I'll tell you why we don't. Because we don't treat <laughs> sex intelligently. First of all, the whole subject of sex <clears throat> is not treated Intelligence should be open conversation, education yeah, in but, all facets of life. But yeah. as a society, shouldn't we be mad at, at uneducated, unmarried people that are having, you know, three, four, five kids? You should, kids? but you're saying who's going to pay for it? Welfare accounts for less than 1% of our budget. The military, that's over 30%. No problem Okay, so with if that. you want to get mad, get all mad right. at Bush for he, when he's about to bomb China, but, which they need to do because they took our people on that plane <laughs> <Sick of laughs> Listen, I, I don't know a, a few months back they had this uh, big uh, reunion at the house of blues for all the children of uh, muddy man uh, scat hole he was like some blues muddy singer man. who's that blues singer that had a hundred kids oh my god what's his name like uh oh he, was, he had a name like uh it was named like the Falcon or something. He had like 96 kids or something oh. like that. They had like a big reunion at the House of Blues for this guy. And the thing was, he died a couple of years, a uh, year and a half ago. And they had something on the internet like, do you think you may be one of his kids? I can't think of the name of this old blues singer. But Fascinating the, story. The, the point Which is... Which brings up something else. You know, they had... Nobody the had wins. a problem with this guy having 95 kids. That's insane. I mean, he literally had That's between insane. 90 and 100 I, kids. I'm, I, I'm so frightened to have one kid. I just don't want to be there loaded, you know, going, why is daddy got a dunk gun to his head? Because society <laughs> hates me, son. <laughs> Daddy's not laughing on the inside. <laughs> I don't want it to end like that. Nice. Guys, Drew. No, it won't. And soon. It'll end sooner Thank than you. that. Thanks, Bob? Man. Yeah. You're 23. Yeah, David, I got to say, I listened to that other show where you did the whole vomiting thing for like half an hour straight. I had to turn off the radio. That was just Thank hilarious. Thank you. That's Thanks a, a lot. Highest compliment. Yeah. Say a hug. I'm so <laughs> proud. I took that tape home and I played it for my girlfriend. That, that was amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. I said I, I did it. the funniest Adam, in the world. Mm. You're my hero. <clears throat> Thank I you. I love you. I'm a longtime listener, first time caller. Great. Dr. Drew, a lot mm-hmm. of respect for what you do. Sure, um, whatever that is. What's up? <laughs> I had a question. Dr. Drew, you're probably going to be able to answer this one. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to really rate on his scale. I'm not sure if I'm going to answer. <laughs> um, I, was, I was wondering, I just started working out, and from what I understand of biology, having a higher level of testosterone means your workouts are more effective, you gain muscle quicker. Yeah. And my question was, if you have a lot of sex or masturbate a lot, does that increase or decrease the amount of testosterone in your system? It increases it to a point, but uh-huh. there's sort of a, 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 a J shape to the curve. In other words, if you're having no sex, your testosterone levels drop down. If you're having moderate, and what that is for a given individual can vary, it will raise the testosterone levels, but if you're sort of excessively masturbating or having sex, they'll start to drop down again. Because you're depleting your body? Y- your body just... fluid. Yeah, your body's trying to get you to stop. You is there a difference between having sex and uh, masturbating? In terms sorry, of stop it. Probably, but body. not... I don't know. In terms of your mean, body? There's probably some differences, but they're would pretty you, subtle. Would this, you, is, this is nice. So does your body know that it's just a hand uh, or you know, I think, a real I think thing? the biology of a sexual encounter is different. I think your belly and hamper know, but I'm not sure. Your belly hamper, they're, 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 they're experts. Can we, can, we, can we segue off into the, the HGH, human growth hormone? Yeah. Now, is it true that or <clears throat> that that can, like, um, like, once you start taking human growth hormone or, like, uh, what is it? The gel, like the testosterone, testosterone gel. gel. Your body right. stops producing its own yes. testosterone. Yes. Like the guys use anabolic steroids to shut their testes down, testes shrink. 
Because your body doesn't need to manufacture it. That is it. That's, Thank you so yeah, yeah. much. I found out! Now you know what's going on but with your penis. Sack. But if yeah, you, if you, if all you shave off. your pubic hair, it'll look bigger, though. So <laughs> <laughs> There's that on there. All right, we're going to take so ourselves bizarre. a uh, little that break. So David bizarre. Allen Greer is our guest tonight. I tell you, the time flies by when you're vomiting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll be back after this. Bloodline. We'll be right back. Call on the 1-800-LOVE-191. Hey, Bloodline. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew over And there. I'm David Allen Greer, special guest here in Loveline with my friend Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. 8.30, everyone. Day, NBC, day, day. Tuesday nights. Dag. 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 Also, uh, David will uh, maybe be coming to a town near you. That's true. Doing a little comedy. Doing over my the little summer. thing this summer, baby. Doing my making my strike money. Is there going to be a strike? Uh, yeah, yeah. There's going to be a strike. Do you think, Doctor Drew? Yep. Really? Uh, I, what do Frankly, I know? Drew right? doesn't know yeah. anything but about it. But I hear people anything. talk about it, so it's just yeah. it's absolutely going to happen. Yeah, that's oh, what everyone says. I hope not. Yeah, if for people listening, who know we're talking about? There's going to be a big strike with the uh, actors and the writers and hey, all who's that Brian good stuff. Herda? Brian Hurd is a race car driver who's going to be in here tomorrow night. You don't know about that? <laughs> You'll see Brian racing in the uh, Grand Prix on uh, oh, Sunday. I certainly will. But you won't be there. <laughs> now I'm going. Really? Yeah. I got pit passes, baby. Yeah. You want some tickets? I'll get them from Brian Hurd on uh, tomorrow night. Uh, I could get them from you, though. <laughs> no, it's cool. I mean, we could go down there together. I mean, we're Dr. a team. True, do you want to go? There? I'd love to go. Right, cool. Thank you. True ain't kids. going anywhere. Kids. Honey, kids, get off the racetrack! Oh my! Oh Lord! Oh! Can True. somebody get him out there? Drew can't even go number two unless his wife signs off uh, on it. He really can't. There's no Dr. way in Drew, hell is you're your going wife to a little ball buster. Oh, little ball buster. Oh, boy. Well, I'm, we work on stuff together. Yeah, right. I want her to sign off. Yeah, yeah. We'll work on busting your balls together. <laughs> <laughs> family affair, nice, Kimberly. Nice. Yeah. You're 21. What's up? Um, whenever. I, I, I can't seem to be able to make friends with females. Like, um, the only friends I really have are, like, when I have a boyfriend, I'll make friends with those girls, and then when um, I break up with him, you know, like, the relationship with those girls will uh, kind of disappear. Yeah. You're one of those chicks who doesn't like other chicks. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. I'd like yeah. to have... They don't like friends. you either. Do you trust women? Pardon? Do you trust women? See, I don't know about that, because, like, I had a friend, and then I got mad at her because, um, like... She was take she was like um, um, taking a not taking advantage but like uh, uh, forgetting yeah. about me or whatever. What does that mean? She was gonna forgetting about you. Well, you know, I, I like think I uh, have a cure for neglecting you. Neglect that's the word. Neglecting yeah. me, like you know, oh, her boyfriend asked me, oh, can yeah. you drive us to the movie theater and like. Yeah, chicks are very competitive with each other. Yeah, yeah. but they ex their expectations are like sometimes. Hey, I know are. how to. Do have you uh, ever gotten on with another girl? No. Try it, bunny. I, no, had, a no. friend, I had another Try friend it. who was... Um, Play, get the boobies out. Was you know, female, go to town. and uh, it turned out that she actually was lesbian. Yeah. And then that was like, you know, like... Well, you need you need female friends and you need guy friends. Yeah. And you've got to you find to a way... You need to get one of those chicks in the sack. You've got to find a way right to off. open up in a trusting way to your some yeah, female absolutely. friends and make better choices with whom you're going to be friend. Yeah, and realize... Something's up with your relationship with your mom. Something not so good. Oh, really? What is that? I mean, like, I think my mom and I are tight, I guess. Really? But she's a woman. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. And who are you kidding? Really? My mom, I, I, my mom, the one my mom, like, confides in. I mean, about all, all the five of us kids. Like, she'll, like, um... Yeah, but you may not like that. She may parentalize you. you may, she, may, she, she tells may, them all that, by the way. And you're the special <laughs> one. Yeah, but she may just be making you be there for her rather than she be there for you. I think she's doing that. And I tell her, like, I don't want to hear about her problems and stuff. Yeah, that's, wow. that's, 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 that's abusive, in fact, for mom wow. to do that. Wow. Those are her problems, not yours. All right, so Kimberly, yeah, you're not her Drew, friend. Hold on, Adam. Yeah, Drew, like, you are in the zone. Between her and my yeah. dad, because they don't have a good relationship. Well, right. you're not buddies. She's Does she ever mom. say stuff like, you know, your dad wants a piece and mama's tired? Get in there. Oh no, because they they um, they're just living together because they have five kids. Well, that's right. good because that would be abuse too, right, Doctor Drew? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't have to be a doctor to know and that's sometimes abuse. Sometimes when I um yeah. make friends, um, mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes when I, I try to make friends with girls, I feel like I'm hitting on them. Ooh. Because you have unresolved lesbo issues. No, no get the boobies they, out. Get the boobies out. Play with them. No, I agree. It's, it's, boobies it's, out. It's probably that you're so desperate to be close to someone that uh, you come across a little desperate. Yeah. What do you like with your boyfriends, there, honey? You got a little stalker in you? 
Do you? You go a little nutty on your boyfriends, Kimberly? Hiding uh, in the bushes? I guess I might, you know. Oh, that's Ooh. beautiful. Like, um, oh, that's great. I don't know what you mean, but... Ah, uh, oh, I love the psycho girls. Though. Yeah, oh, makes you feel special. They're pistols in the sack, my friend. Love them. Oh, yeah. You don't want to take them to church because they'll cause a ruckus. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't go to church. <laughs> a ruckus. <laughs> yeah, they'll start Some speaking happen. in tongues. Oh. Tell us a story, David. Aping and clowning. <laughs> I like the kooky girls, though, I do. Is there a story? Oh, jeez. Yeah. So how do I... Um, yeah. What should I do to, like, try to, uh, you know... <laughs> Um, you did comedians, female comedians? Oh, no, hold on. Kimberly. Yeah. Not just, that cookie. Just look, just be a little more trusting with women. Well, and, I don't know how to like, even make all it. All right, I don't. I listen, I'm that guy you know in your whole it's life. It's the voice. It's the voice. Just nah, find yourself cool. a female who hey, doesn't Hey, guys, I see you. Dr. Drew's playing with his little stick-up papers. You, yeah. your eyes are rolling in the back of your head, Adam. Let's get focused, guys. You're right. It's the fourth quarter. Let's go. Fight. Fight all the way to the end. We're saving babies. Right. Next let's, caller, let's, Chuck. Let's, what's your problem? Let's talk about Felching again. Oh no, no, no. come on, no. man. I, I I surrender. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Claire. I'm sorry. Yes. You're 26. Yes. You're on with a dear, dear, dear friend, David Allen Greer. How are you, Claire? Uh, uh, I'm not doing so well. How are you, David? I'm what's the matter? Um, I just came back from the hospital. My brother tried to commit suicide again for the second time last night. Mm -hmm. How did he try that? Um, well, both times with pills. How old is he? He's 23. Mm -hmm. And um, we're kind of at a loss of what to do. I mean, I know that typically the pattern is, is that people who try to commit suicide do it several times before they succeed. And um, we really don't know what to do. He's got, he suffers from obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, among among other things. Things. A history of um, depression? Pardon? A history of depression? Does he have a history of depression? Um, yeah, yeah, he does. Is he an yeah. addict? Uh, but the very first time uh, that he tried to commit suicide was just two months ago. So. Oh, how? What? Pills? Are you close? Are you close with him? Yeah, we're very close. All right, let me ask you one other thing. Are there any <laughs> other members of your immediate family that suffer from obsessive compulsive disorder or depression? Um, I would say probably my grandmother suffers from manic depression, and my father probably has some OCD. All right. So, so you want to tell her there's nothing you can do. Well, no, there's a lot you can do. It's a heritable disorder to some extent, but it's, it's, you said among other things. So he's got OCD. He's got, he's got OCD. I think he's got some manic depressive um, tendencies. Yeah. What are and, personality problems? Uh, he has he's, uh, has some aggression. Aggression. There, there are lots of things that I think that he hasn't really fully been. But have they given with. have they given him a name for his personality situation? Uh, uh, is he under yeah. treatment? No. Not that I'm mm -hmm. aware of. All right. Is he, was he oh, hospitalized well, last attempt? Pardon? Was he hospitalized his last suicide yeah, attempt? Yeah, he's still in the hospital now. He's in the ICU. No, his previous suicide oh, attempt. Oh, his pre... Yeah, he was... Um, he, his stomach was pumped, and then they, they took him to the uh, the psych ward for oh, three days. Three days. He, he mm -hmm. had to spend a few weeks in a psych ward, it sounds Yeah, like. I know. Does, does he know. have Does he have but, insurance that will cover that? Uh, you know, I, I think he does. Uh, the problem right. is, the last time he was there, nobody came to see him. He no, There wasn't a social worker. There wasn't a psychiatrist. Nothing. They just Why charged him. try a different hospital, maybe? Yeah, I think that's sort of the plan this time. Hey, Claire? Yes. I got a couple questions. What pills did he take? Um, well, <laughs> the first time he took some of the medication that he was on, he took Clonopin and he took some Naughton. Um, the, the last time he took some veterinary tranquilizers and he Ooh. took some... Uh, Aspirin. I see. And and who discovers him? Um, well, he usually calls my mom. Oh, so he does it and then he makes the call. Yeah, he does it. But then he barricades himself in his room. I see. So he, you know, he's, he's crying out for help, as they say. Yeah, absolutely. It's just that oh, I, don't, I don't... We don't know what the next step is. Yeah. Well, I... I, I ever he tried needs, to take he's got to stay in intensive psychiatric care long. I would tie a long. cinder block around my waist. You, you, you can try the hospital. Shoot myself in the head while I'm standing on a bridge... Where where was he hospitalized before? Yeah, if you were really trying to take yourself out. Yeah, yeah, come where on. was he hospitalized, Claire? Um, where was he hospitalized before? He was at Northridge, and now he's at Valley Prez, but I don't think they have a psych ward. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I think I think long-term care may be the solution. But well, I'm not talking about long, long, necessarily. I mean, unless there's some personality disorder that is just profound, but at least a longer course of intensive treatment. Mm -hmm. Hey, Claire, sorry your brother's screwing your life up, too, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. And everyone's got a pain in the ass family members right. bringing them down with them. Well, you what guys, is that? You guys are preaching today. Oh, oh yeah. I like the whole like the... stuff. You came back, man. You came yeah. back. We're up on our uh, oh, Apple box. Okay. Longer than a couple days. Wow. And, you know, it's always weird, and I don't want to make light of it, but the people that try to kill themselves and then make the phone call, 
Mm-hmm. At the same time, they're yeah, they're obviously disturbed. That's a lot of these are that's a lot of um, aggression. Planning. Yeah, yeah, those yeah, are acts of aggression. Those are the same kids that that <clears throat> then turn that aggression on other people. Oh. It's true. You know what, Doctor Drew? You are so wise. These high school shootings. Here's what I think. That is for a kid that age to shoot up other kids. I think that is it's an act of suicide. No, it, it, that's it's absolutely. It, it normally not normally, but in other circumstances, that child would have tried to kill himself. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it goes the other direction when they see mm-hmm. that option. Mm-hmm. Right. Back mm-hmm. in the day, right. they would have just killed themselves. Yeah, I mean, yeah. think about all those high school age teen suicides you yeah. would hear about. A certain percentage percentage of those are turning into school shootings exactly. Exactly. and are exactly. no longer teen suicides That's anymore. That's precisely Absolutely. what's happening. But it is a suicide because obviously when you're 16 years old and you're saying, I'm going to uh, have you know news footage of me taking out 15 classmates... You know you're going in prison. You'll well, here's never the, here's get out. The, here's the element, too. They never run away. They never try and get away. They surrender or kill themselves. Yep. That's right. It's, so it's, virtually it's like, I'm done. Yeah. There, is, a, there is an interesting, um, and this ain't it exactly, but it reminded me of something. There's an interesting form of suicide where you try to get somebody to kill you. Yeah. Like uh, police yeah, have to deal yeah, with this. Yeah. They go out in front of the police station. They start uh, waving around a, a pistol that's uh, carved out of soap and wait for some sniper to take them out <coughs> because because of their religious beliefs or because of right. whatever sort of uh, internal convictions or whatever they got going on, they can't do it themselves. Right. You know, there's another phenomenon. It's not where you try and kill you, get someone to kill you, but just do you want to get a really badly beaten is you get in a car and you like race away from the police. Yeah, like a few they call it, like Black Rodney guy. King did. Yeah, which was right. basically that's what that's what the police contended that he really was trying to get them to be... He just wanted attention. Yeah, he just wanted attention. (laughs) He craved attention. Y'all can't catch me now! (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Next time, though, if you're going to try out run the cops, you got to get a little something better than a Hyundai XL. I know, I know. Especially when you're a (laughs) 300-pound dude and you got four brothers in the car with you. I know. That that car's got about 85 horsepower, (laughs) and he had about 1,500 pounds worth of brother in the car (laughs) with (laughs) People were coming, police were coming from all the They're running up next to the car. Whoop ass. (laughs) Dr. Drew, you you seem to be on a healing mission. Yeah, he doesn't care about Rodney. After the break. Josh? Yeah. Yeah, you do uh, voluntary body modification. Right, right. Uh, I haven't done much yet, but I'm very mm-hmm. interested. You're looking in. into it? Yeah. Um, right now I have my ears stretched up to about a half inch. Right. You mean like the big plugs in the earlobe, you mean? Right, right. The, the uh, pro- progressive circles. Yeah. Right. 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 And um, in the future I'm looking towards... Uh, I think it's called a tongue phrenectomy to remove the tongue webbing and uh, right. nice. elongate the tongue and then ultimately for a tongue splitting. Nice. Oh, Have right. you seen the guy who split his penis? Yeah, there are yeah, a few of those yeah. out there. Uh, yeah. oh, that's beautiful. I've actually met a few guys like that in person. So Nice, nice. There's also nice. a, um, so nice. I think it's a French. We, we call that filet penis. That's beautiful. Right. There's right. a that's French beautiful. move that goes on with the scrotum. It's called the sac le bleu. <laughs> it's <laughs> where, where you actually stretch the scrotum out oh. until it gets down to the knee. Nice, and nice, then you can pull nice. it up over your head. All right, now this is true. There is a religious sect in India where the guys stretch their penises up to 36 inches. They roll them up and keep them in sex. Of course, they can't get erections or right, anything. They're right. just like huge and long. Yeah. And Indians nice. do that with their nails, too. They have a weird, yeah. weird group over there. That's hey, Josh? Crazy. Yeah. Hang on a second. All well, right. Why? Where are, you ca- kinda... where are you calling from, by the way? Uh, Fruitland, Idaho. It's a little yeah. town. Yeah. Fruitland. Right. They named the town after you, or <laughs> you moved there after it was named? What kind yeah. of chicks do you date man um actually my girlfriend is very i mean i'm i'm religious i'm a strong christian but she is too and she's not into it but she's okay with me being in all right hold on a second josh because i want to get more into this it's an interesting thing this sort of mutilation of one's body after this 1-800-LOVE-191 we'll be right back Hi, this is Tracy Lawrence, and you're listening to Love Line. Can she come in? Yeah. Why can't I be here when the porno chicks come, man? We, we just peeled David Allen Greer like an onion, and oh, let me tell you, it ain't, 
Adam, it ain't pretty. I'm trusting that you keep our little secret. <laughs> it ain't pretty what's going on inside oh, of that. Mama, man. I got a little scared of you. I'm making a phone call, Adam, all right? Uh, all right. I'm going to call the uh, the uh, uh, mobile unit here. <laughs> yeah, let's get it. Call a helicopter. Forget about a van. All right, David Allen Greer, our guest tonight. What's up, baby? <laughs> 15 minutes. All you sick and injured people, call up Love Line because we're going to heal you up. Dag, Tuesday nights, 8.30 in B.C. I, I, I want to I talk a little more to uh, young Josh over here who's uh, into the uh, body modification. Now, you say you're a uh, Christian, right, Josh? Yeah. And, and, and doesn't this, isn't your body a temple or something? Um, I, I, I do believe in everything, but I also believe... Uh, believe that my body's a temple and I have the right to this decorate is, this is it the, however I want. This is the great uh, sort of it's aspect of, of religion. Yeah, yeah, it's like I believe in the, every word in the Bible except I choose to interpret. <laughs> right. This, <laughs> except this one, this one right. here, this is my. Have you ever heard of the hammerhead, uh, Adam? No. They take a piece work? of metal. Along oh, yeah. Thing. They insert it in the head of the penis. Yeah. And it grows. It's like a hammerhead shark. Ouch. That's nice. It's nice. Uh -oh. It's nice. It's nice. You know, the kids, everybody's doing it. Hey, Josh. Can I see yours? Yeah. So you got the ears. Uh, now, oh. You, you want to do the, uh, what is that, the frenulum under the tongue? He wants to, yeah, cut that You off. clip that. And then right. what do you get out of that? Long tongue. Yeah. Does your tongue come, it, protrude further? Yes. Then he wants to fork his tongue. He wants to split it. Oh, do you want to fork it? Right. Ultimately splitting it, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, you may want to uh, fork your tongue. I'd like to fork your ass. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> Little sensor humor nice, there. Nice, right. Nice. Um, doesn't this seem odd, uh, Josh, and so very permanent? I, it, it does, and that was part of my question for Drew. Uh, you know, all these people who are doing it right now... Uh, you know, in 20 years, if they start to regret it, what are they going to look like? Yeah. Look, look at for you're going to be you're going to be talking to a therapist with your tongue all forked up. <laughs> going, you don't know what it's like, man. I made a mistake. Now turn it. Well, this, back. this is what we were yeah. talking about all during the great break. Too. Right. Yeah, you sound like Count Dracula your whole life. <laughs> like, well, I would have loved. I don't want fangs anymore. But the, we were talking about <laughs> this during the break. Is that uh, every 17 year old has just all sorts of bizarre ideas? Yeah. He, he's 19, but really, I thought I was going to be a pirate astronaut when I was 19. <laughs> I really did legitimately so think that's what I was going to do. relationships that we would have signed Absolutely. on with the devil to, to preserve Absolutely. and aspects of our life that we would have given every, anything to preserve that turned out to be just mm -hmm. transient nonsense. Here, here, is, here is your goal when you're before the age of 25. I don't care if you're 3, 13, or 21. Do not do anything that's permanent, that will be a lasting... A uh, monument. A beacon to the rest <laughs> yeah. of society about what a jackass you were at 19. That includes uh, gender reassignment. That Ooh. includes bad tats. Tattoos. That includes kids in often, often cases. Marriages. Bad marriages. All those great... Hey, that includes riding a motorcycle with no helmet when you're drunk. Right. All the things that can... Preach forever them. affect your life that you think is a good idea at the time, 17, 18, I guarantee you will That includes inviting on. friends on radio shows and making them puke! <laughs> That's right, Josh. Don't ever do Don't that. Don't ever do that, I'll, Josh. I'll keep that in mind. All right, Josh, really, yeah. just, listen, you want to screw around a little with yourself, fine, have but you, that's have big you permanent the, stuff. The tingling? No, what's no. that? The tingling is they put a bell in your butt. <laughs> and every they, time you break away and a cow chases ting, you. Yeah, ting, ling, 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 ling. It's nice. All the kids are doing. Where the hell did you come up with that one? Oh, no, I, just Maybe one those, <laughs> hey, I think they had to come up with those, those whistles that go whoo <laughs> whoo. <laughs> yeah, whoo whoo. <laughs> Kazoo butt. <laughs> Sam? Uh, you're 23. What's up? First of all, um, the singer with the hundred kids is uh, Screamin' Jay Hawkins. Screamin' ah, Jay Hawkins, absolutely. yeah. For what it's worth. How many kids did Screamin' Jay have? Uh, I don't know. Screamin' Jay's kids, how many showed up? I don't know. That was like into the 90s. Oh, yeah. All right. And I had a question for David. Um, yes. Didn't you, you played a character called uh, Don No Soul Simmons, did you not? Tie a yellow ribbon okay. around the old oak long tree, ago. it's been three <laughs> long years. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I was just wondering if you, like, developed that character yourself, or if that was written for you, or if... It was written, and I auditioned 
against O.J. Simpson. I beat him up for the part. Oh, wow. Really? And, yeah, John Landis How directed was that? it. Is that yeah. on? Was that Amazon Women? Amazon Women on the Moon. Yeah. It was many, many years ago. I always associate you with that because that's what I first saw you in. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was written, but I did come in. I, I came in and I sang the Three Dog Night song. Oh, really? Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Oh. Oh. Who wrote that song? That is, those are the stupidest songs. Yeah, letters. it's a ridiculous what song. A well, the, yeah. the guy was pretty high on heroin oh, <laughs> most Chuck of his Nick career. Ron, yeah. 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 Oh, that's beautiful. Chuck's doing well now. Yeah. He's doing really well. Yeah. Well, at least he didn't know Eli's coming. Mm-hmm. Hey, Sam. Eli's coming. Eli's coming. You better hide your love away. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, that's a that that's one me and David could hook up on in a karaoke yeah. session. Well, this is this is Adam's uh, boxing music. Oh, yeah. for that guy. Yeah, yeah. Like, come on, it's three dog night. Now yeah. punch. No, but I, I do. Mama told me not to come. Oh, that's my yeah, right. yeah, three that's, dog. Yeah, night. That's the theme song for your life, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Candy. Yeah. You're 16. What's up? 14. Oh, 14. 14. Sorry. What's going on? Um, I want to have a threesome with my boyfriend, but I'm not sure. I, I've heard some things about um, it not being safe to do at this age. Are you having sex with your boyfriend? Yeah. And that's not so safe already. How old's your boyfriend? Um, 15. All right. Don't have the threesome. Don't do it. You'll regret it. Mm. Yeah. Why? Why? Uh, they, they, they seem so fun. Yeah. Were you sexually abused when you were like eight? No. What? what Nine. Age? Okay, can you have oh. a threesome and not be twisted, Dr. At 14, Drew? at 14? Well, okay. Um, I've never been sexually abused. Tell him, tell him, so. baby, tell him. Mm. Let, me, uh, let me give a little fight analogy here, a little boxing analogy as a uh, homage to our guest, David Allen Greer. Let me explain something to you, 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 you uh, young ladies. You, uh, at 14, don't want to get thrown in to a threesome it's like uh it's like when marvis frazier got tossed in with um who, who beat the cramp well fir- first uh holmes beat him pretty good but he also got tossed in with tyson or somebody got tossed in with tyson you get tossed in too early you get permanently damaged right. and it goes on your record when you're a young fighter they take you along slowly give you some tomato cans, try to build up the record a little. Some of you girls that we talk to, and I say girls because there is a double standard in this society. Uh, by 15 or 16, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're uh, 4 and 26 you, and have some brain damage. You know I mean? Slow it down a little. It's all, it all goes on the permanent record. You know what, Adam? You're preaching to the converted right here, my friend, but I think uh, you may have lost a little honey bunny there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Candy? Let me tell you something, honey. When you, you don't swallow in the corner, you swish and spit out. Now, when you're in the relationship, don't take a gut punch. You want to go to the head, but you work the body. That's how you knock them out. When er- Ernie Shavers fought Archie Moore in 71, you remember Working that? Brother. Yes. Go on a break. Yeah, it's the same thing. Nice. Now, Candy, slow down and don't get pregnant. Get on some birth control. Please. All right? And we also use condoms. All right. Okay. Excellent. All right. We'll be right back. We'll be back. Hello. This is your radio. Radio. Love line. We'll be right back. Yep. Well, there you go. Another fantabulous right. night of uh, love lying over and done What are we going to do without David Allen Greer here? I, I don't know, know man. You're going to sink, night. baby. Listen, I got to get to the Toyota Grand Prix. Adam, Yeah. give a brother a shout out, man. Give uh, a brother a shout out. I want to apologize for that little message. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you should be humiliated. Dag, Tuesday nights. How dare you, sir? I'm a B slash C celebrity myself. Uh, <laughs> Tuesday yes. nights, NBC, 8.30. Dag, everybody. Watch yes. that show. Support Watch the friends it. of Love Line. And, um, Drew, how, yeah. uh, you don't have any, you usually have like four or five other jobs going. You I'm know? doing that Men from Mars, Men from Venus thing in the morning. And I'm Beautiful. doing my practice. And, All right. And, man. right yeah. I'd like to come on that show. You, you want to come on it? Yeah, when you got like women who love too much, I mean, but some cutie pie, so you know what I'm saying? Where are you on with your girlfriend? How about that? Oh, my girlfriend. Oh, God bless her. Elvira? God bless her. She's beautiful. El- Elvira is very attractive, you know. She, she, she was, was, yeah. All yeah. right, we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna wrap the show up. Uh, everybody, look out! 
Brian Herta in here tomorrow night. Race car driver Brian Herta. Talk to him, <laughs> and we'll see you at the Grand Prix this weekend. Isai so Morales is a friend of mine. He's going to be here next week. Yeah, he's a little nutty. So until next time, Sam Crow for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. What's David Allen Greer used to get laid? Roofies, baby. Is it plop, a... plop, fizz, fizz. <laughs> oh, what relief it is. <laughs> this has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.